Hey there, welcome to Coffee with a Pastor. Hey. I'm Jason. I'm John. Glad you guys are here joining us and uh, hanging out again in my office tonight on a Sunday evening. Um, yeah, we're we're looking forward to this one. I think we got a good discussion topic for tonight and definitely looking for you guys' input. So um, we're going to give a few minutes as kind of a what we do, give mm -hmm. people time to jump on. Um, Hop on in. Yeah. So if you're with us, make sure you are uh, leaving a hey, what's up in the comments. Um, I love that my mom's here. She always joins first. I don't know if she wants to acknowledge that or not, but I can see that she joined on our super secret hey, end. Don't, don't our moms have similar names? If they do. I have. Them? I've noticed that. That I've, I've accidentally called. No, they're, they're not really similar. Shirley and Cheryl, Cheryl. they're kind of similar. I thought you were talking about like mom. Like my mom's name is the same as your mom's name. <laughs> like <Both> mom. Yeah. <laughs> mom and mom. Her name's mom, duh. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, hey, look, my mom said hi. My hi, name, mom. My mom's name is Mama. Mama. That's kind of a different name. Mama. So, yeah. So, yeah, we're just going to give a few seconds. Um, I'm back this week. I am... Out yeah. of the hospital. You sprung back pretty quick. Yeah, it's like, it's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm a little sore, but yeah, it's. I'm glad to be back. He just had his back like taken apart and put back together like a jigsaw puzzle. Pretty much, it's kind of what they did. I had a uh, fusion of the L5S1. Um, I was a little bit uh, unstable, had some broken bones, which resulted in some bad bone growth that happened and trashed my disc and so that had to be removed parts of my bones had to be cut out hey Jamie I am feeling I'm feeling okay I'm sore I'm I mean it I feel like I was stabbed repeatedly which when you think about it the only difference between like somebody who like stabs you in a bad way and a doctor is like you're paying one to do it like some people right. just stab you because they want to like do harm but really a surgeon all you're doing is you're paying them to repeatedly stab you for hours hoping that you get better it's kind of a right. crazy thought when you think about that so thanks for asking, Jamie. I'm I'm sore. I'm in a little bit of pain. My nerve pain is gone, which is crazy. Like the wow. the original. What does it feel like? It feels like I can feel things, Weird. which is is crazy. Yeah. When I woke up in the hospital from the from the surgeon, I remember being moving like the bed sheets a little bit, and I felt it rub on the outside of my left leg, which was kind of trippy because I haven't felt that in an over a year. And so um, it was it was good to to be able to feel that. So, hey, Sarah, how are you doing? I see Anita's signed on. Um, there's Michelle, my wife, who is awesome. Hey, hey, wifey, I love you. You are the best. Michelle is doing an awesome job of taking care of me. I want to throw out that. Like, I feel That's like, cute. like I'm, I'm normally a needy guy. She can probably tell you that. Um, but I'm even especially needy right now because I can't bend over to, like, put my socks on. Yeah. And so she's been, she's been helping me with that. She made me my my very own special uh, cake. I got a, a pineapple cake that it's like my grandma's is it recipe. Like pineapple upside down? No, it's different than that. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it is it is awesome. So it's like the greatest cake ever. Maybe one of these days we'll have to put the, the recipe in there for people to find out. So, hey, so if you signed on yet and you have not uh, not thrown your name in the comments, we want to acknowledge you. So go ahead and, and jump and say, jump in the comments and say, hey, we're here because Jason will feel lonely if, uh, if we don't see that you're here. So we're giving just a couple seconds to, to get started. We'll start right at the top of the hour, which is like in two minutes. We um, said hi to Sarah, didn't we? We did say hi to Sarah, but we can say hi to Sarah again. Uh, Michelle says it is a hard job, but she doesn't mind loving me. So you guys, you prayer warriors out there, um, and I've seen some signed on, but I'm not going to say your name unless you don't want anybody else to see that you're here. So I'm not going to acknowledge you unless you say hi in the comments. <laughs> um, so you can pray for Michelle that uh she because she's putting up with me and that's a that's a full-time job so anyways hey before we get to the serious part yeah i want to tell a funny story about my mom there's tech she did she did sign in i oh. saw tech signed on earlier but i didn't want to say her unless she like acknowledged that Hi, she was tech. here hey tech thanks for joining us and uh a sock aid is that uh that'd probably be bad if i started calling michelle a sock aid huh that's like i'm assuming a tool so Oh, Sarah's going to pray for Michelle. That's awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, yeah. Hey, Josh. Thanks for joining. Okay. So, uh, hey, Kennedy. So um, my story. Yeah, your story. What's your story, Jason? My mom, um, she downloaded this app that, like, uh, 
like records the sound she makes while she's sleeping. Okay. Yep. To like monitor the quality of sleep that she gets. Yep. And she can go back and play back the things that she says in her sleep. And <laughs> apparently, I haven't heard it, but she apparently in her sleep she played back the recording, and she's like, "At you, at you." Oh no! I've got the virus. <laughs> at you, at you. <laughs> like she's not really sneezing. Yeah, but she's saying the word at you. <laughs> Don't let the Rona get you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so awesome. Well, I see well, we I'm got. Wonderful. Yeah, your mom's awesome. That would. You know, I wonder. That'd be kind of fun if you could sneak some copies of that. And maybe we could maybe <laughs> make like a greatest hits reel of yeah. your mom sleeping. She probably wouldn't wouldn't let uh, us do that. So. She's got a good sense. Um, Massachusetts. Wow, look at that, Kennedy. Um, you're kind of far ways away. So, you know, one thing I'm going to throw out there that uh, this is going to be kind of maybe coming to a little bit different is I heard there's some rumors that the city oh, yeah. might be voting tomorrow with the potential of looking at how this whole like lockdown um, thing is going and they might actually start releasing some mm -hmm. of the, you know, the regulations. the regulations and the restrictions on gatherings. So we're we're praying that we can get back together in person very soon. Um, oh, that'll be great. That'll be great. Yeah, we'll definitely still live stream um, services, but uh, we're you know just stay tuned to everything because things might start looking different here in the near future. We'll maybe talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to like be in person with you guys again. This is cool. I love that we can interact with you guys in the comments. Um, I know of some churches that they've. They're pre-recording things and then releasing it at the right time instead of doing the live thing, which is okay, and they, they gotta do what they think is best. But I, I love the fact that I can talk in real time to you guys through this. Um, so we've chosen to at Renewal to do our, our format a little bit differently mm -hmm. because I want it interactive. And and it's, yeah, it's different than a normal service, but I guess those of you guys have been around with us long enough know we, we try to stick away, stay away from the normal. Right. So um, that way we can, we can find right. all you guys. Try to always keep the purpose in mind. That's right. To lose the, lose the why. Yeah, that's right. Of what you're doing, if you, if. Yeah, because like if if we were just doing a pre-record thing, I couldn't say, hey Angelo, I see you just signed in. Thanks for joining us. We're glad you're back in Rapid City. Um, I can I can see that other people have jumped in with us, and right. and so I love the interactive part of, of Facebook Live. Um, and we got a fun discussion I think going on tonight. Uh, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, so make sure if you guys haven't done so yet, make sure you've liked our Facebook page. Um, that will notify you when we have uh, put out new videos or go live and stuff like that so you don't miss things. Um, so if you haven't liked our Facebook page, make sure you do that. Um, if you want to get signed up for our, our text messages that give you updates about church and especially when we can start getting back to meeting together, um, we'll be communicating that way. So make sure you sign up for that if you have not done so yet. So text the word CONNECT to uh, 605-939-7916, 605-939-7916. Um, every now and then I see an angry emoji go up on the, the feed, oh, and I'm not sure if that's, yeah. what's going that's, on with that. Uh, um, that's CJ. Oh. Her kids will watch it with her, and then mm. they'll just like go back and forth on the. Oh, reactions. is that what that is? Okay. And then they'll just let go of one of them and, and see where it's at. Just kind of action roulette. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm like, who am I making mad? <laughs> I knew I made I made some vegans mad last week. Oh. But for yeah. that, I was just joking. I love vegans because you guys make the meat prices go down. So, um, yeah. I love vegans. Vegans are alright. So, anyways, yeah. Text the word connect to six zero five nine three nine seven nine one six, and that gets you in our text messaging system. Um, yeah, so you don't miss things that are there. They are so angry that they can't be th there with oh. you. Who's angry that they can't be where, with Those us? people's angry emojis. Oh, the angry emojis. Yeah. They're angry that they can't be with us. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm going to yeah, think yeah, about yeah, yeah. that way. There. Thanks yeah. for the clarification, Sarah. That's awesome. They, I, I sleep better at night now. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so text connect to our phone number. I think it's on the screen there, the 939-7916. Um, but, yeah, there's possibly in-person gatherings are going to be coming up soon. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Another big announcement that I want to throw out there is we're going to be starting some grow groups. Um, that's our small group ministry at Renewal. We're going to be starting some grow groups uh, coming up this week. I would ideally like to get one going on Wednesday nights and one on Thursday nights, for mm. depending on who can join whatever. So if you would like to join a grow group, um, put in the comments whether you would prefer a Wednesday evening or a Thursday evening. And uh, what, the way we'll do that for right now is we'll do that through Zoom. 
um, we'll do an online um, small group Bible studies. And uh, there's some really cool topics we'd like to do. Uh, tech is wanting to connect. Um, are you getting our text messages right now, Tech? If not, I can make sure that you're in there. Um, but yeah, we want to start uh, some Zoom Bible studies on Wednesday or Thursday night. So if you'd be willing to join one or would be interested in joining one, say either Wednesday or Thursday in the comments, and we'll follow up with you on that. So Taylor is joining us all the way from Japan. Wow. Um, that is so awesome. It's 8, 8 a.m. on a Monday. She's like living in the future. Whoa. That is awesome, living in the future. Uh, when when the virus ends, Taylor, can you like let us let acquaint us old people in the past know yeah. so that way um, we know how, what to expect? Let us That'd know be the awesome. Virus is over. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, Taylor. We we miss you guys too. Um, yeah. So grow groups are going to be coming. Michelle says she wants a Wednesday night one. Um, if you guys want a Thursday night one, throw in there, and we'll. I'd like to get a couple options going. So um, we'll connect that way. All right. So. Uh, also, make sure you comment on this video, the main video, not uh, a watch party. Otherwise, we will we will um, not have you there. So, anyways, uh, yeah, Jason, should we transition to a little bit of worship? Yeah. Yeah. So for this week, for um, the worship portion, I chose the song "Holy Water." And um, it's just a, a song that rejoices in the beauty of God's grace and forgiveness um, that allows us to be his children. And, yeah, I think I think everybody that goes through renewal knows it pretty well. Yeah, so. It's a pretty cool song. Yeah. Before you start, should I throw out to everybody? So this is how hardcore Jason is. <laughs> he, he didn't have a guitar pick with him tonight, but he wants to do this so much that he found something to play with uh, his guitar with. And so I don't know if you want to throw that out there for people to see, but it's yep, it's, it's pretty cool. It's just my gym membership. <laughs> so sing along if you know it, or you can look up lyrics on, on Google or something. It's called Holy Water by, uh, what's their name again? Uh, I can't remember their name. We the Kingdom? We the Kingdom, is that who it is? Yep. Yeah.
love that song. That's that's a it's a newer one, um, yeah. but definitely definitely love it. Uh, yeah. So um, I see that uh, Jesse signed on from Minnesota. Hey Jesse, thanks for joining us. It's good to be in in a church setting with you, even through the internet. And I do want to throw out too. I don't know if any of you guys know this. So Jesse is another uh, MB pastor. He's uh, at uh, Lake Region Mennonite Church in Lake Region, Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. I'm still kind of learning the geography over there. Um, but their church is the church that has lent us uh, Abby, who I said I, t- I told Abby I'm going to try and get her on the video tonight, and she said it's not going to happen. Um, so if you guys want to see Abby, you guys got to like throw Abby out like in the comments. I'm going to see if I can get her to step in front of the the camera. Hey, Tina and Jess. Good to see you guys. Thanks for jumping on. So we want to see Abby uh, come on the camera. Um, come on, Abby. It's it's time for you to be here. Um, she's she's <laughs> so trying to fight it right now. She's giving John that I'll, look. She I'll is. Be okay. No, you won't be okay. I look at all the the love emojis wanting Abby to come on the uh, on the camera. So you guys. Ooh. Yes, I really want you to. That'd be awesome. Well, Jesse doesn't even know if you're really here. I'm not even- yeah, just yeah, just come walk in front of us just over here. Just lean in and just yeah, stick your face in front of the camera and say hi to everyone. Okay. Maybe, 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 maybe. Hey, <laughs> there she did it. All right. So Abby is uh, behind the scenes doing stuff. She's a vital part of the church, and I uh, couldn't do stuff without her. So we really she appreciate. Was a, she was got. She was like a the star of the the opening intro for Easter. Yeah, for yeah. Her. She was, she was a lot of, yeah, she does a lot of stuff for us. She's commenting back with you guys on Facebook. So when you see comments and stuff, that's uh, there. So, yep, she, uh, she does so much around here. Uh, she's a huge asset. So thanks again, Jesse. Tell your whole church thanks again for uh, letting us have her. Um, it's great. So, all right. Well, um, if you guys have prayer requests, make sure that you put those in the comments and send them to us uh, because that way... Um, we're going to pray at the end of this tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll pray with your requests, pray with you guys together um, if you put your requests in the thing. So, um, hey, Emily, thanks for jumping in with us. Glad to see you on here. So, all right, tonight's discussion is going to be a fun one. All right, I'm ready. You're ready for this. Yeah. So, what what I, th- I thought we'd maybe talk about tonight a little bit is why join a church? What's the point of church membership? Um, so yeah, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a fun one, and I, I want you guys' participation. Um, if you guys if you guys have like common objections you've heard of why wouldn't you join a local church, um, you can throw that in the comments, and we'll we'll discuss that too. But uh, I want to I want to kind of discuss that tonight a little bit. Like, what's the point of being a member of a local church? So. It's going to be a fun one. Um, before we get into this, maybe we should pray, and then we'll dive into this discussion. So if you guys will join with me in prayer, we'll, we'll uh, discuss this topic. So Jesus, we love you. We thank you um, for just being a, a relational God that uh, is, is the creator, but also wants to be in relationship with your, um, with your people. And so we thank you for that. I pray that as we spend some time discussing church membership and what being part of your body looks like, that you would uh, guide the discussion, that you would help us um, be better representations of you to the people that are watching, and that we would be passionate about the gospel and seeing people that don't know you come to saving faith in you. So I just pray that uh, you will guide this next little bit of time we have and uh, that we would honor you in it. Um, We ask all these things through your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh... (laughs) Yeah, church membership. When when you hear church membership, like, what are what are some of the initial thoughts that hit you? Hmm. Good, bad, indifferent, sketchy. I don't know. I think maybe a lot of people grew up um, going to a church. Maybe maybe the kinds of churches where there's like confirmation involved. Okay. And where you know, it's kind of like a duty. Sure. Or, you know, or you're 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 becoming a, a member of a church because your your family is already You grew up in the church so therefore you do it because right. you were kind of born into it type of thing. Right. Yeah. That's what I think of. Yeah. Well I've I've heard whenever I talk about church membership with people I hear 
so many different things, like a range of, of questions, a range of uh, things going on. Um, and so it's, it's kind of a fun discussion, but uh, you know, I think it's sometimes misunderstood of what church membership is, what it mm-hmm. isn't, um, right. and stuff like that. So I, I thought maybe tonight we could unpack some of this a little bit. So I, I found a blog, um, the Gospel Coalition, they have a website. Um, it's a bunch of different churches. They have blogs and articles and stuff people put on. I think the Gospel Coalition has some pretty, pretty legitimate stuff. And so if you ever want to check it out, um, you totally can. But I found, a, I found a blog that I actually, I really liked what was in some of the things. And so I'm going to actually base some of the talking points tonight off okay. of that blog. Um, and I want to give the, the author, Kevin D. Young, credit for it. Um, so there is this, uh, this link right here. I'm going to throw it in the comments. Um, this is where some of those are coming from. So feel free to, if you you know want to check them out, uh, yeah, that's kind of where some of these talking points are coming from. So um, I think that in, in a in our community, mm-hmm. we live in a very consumeristic driven community. I don't know if you would agree with that statement or not. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that, that's an understatement. That's an understatement, right? Like yeah. everything's me focused. Mm-hmm. Right, like we we love to consume. Right, like read your basic restaurant review. You know? mm. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like everything wasn't up to my standards. As a, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you are the the author of all like good or bad, right? Because right? I am the king of my castle, or you know, yeah, like that kind of mentality. Like I'm entitled. To, to, to perfection. Things, yeah, exactly the way I want them. Sure, and, and if something doesn't happen, then then you can go to the competitor across town and see if they're any better. Right. Right. And what an ego boost that is, like, to have actually people try to cater to mm. exactly what you're, you want. Your every little whim. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, so as a, I think as a society, we've turned into a very consumeristic, um, content-consuming machines, essentially, and it's, it's, actually pretty unhealthy I, I believe mm-hmm. um, and we want everything centered around us we want um, yeah it's all me focused and and I think that that has actually crept its way and maybe not just crept it's it's pretty prevalent in church um, in America um, that we're consuming Christians that right. we we see that church is supposed to be all about me kind of I guess mm-hmm. if that makes sense like if I if I go to your church and the music wasn't quite right the pastor you know he was two minutes longer maybe he's he's like me and spoke really fast mm-hmm. maybe he's opposite of me and he speaks really slowly like whatever whatever reason I don't like the church I can go across the street and find another church right um, and so we just kind of shop or hop until we find like our consumeristic driven model that fits us best right um, and so that's, I think that that's kind of at the heart of where we're going to go at tonight a little bit is, is church designed to be a, an event we attend, uh, like a, a program to be consumed or is church supposed to be part of a, a community that's mutually submissive to each other under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I think that those two ideas are fundamentally opposite with mm-hmm. each other. Yeah. Any thoughts you want to throw in on that? Uh, Anything I didn't explain very I well? Think, uh, I think you set it up pretty good. I think I think the discussion is is there is ready to be all right delved into. So so there's a lot we can say, but I just yeah as we get into as we it, get into it, we'll get going. Yeah. So yeah, th- so I kind of want to preface this whole thing with I think the consumer driven events the the media consuming church style that unfortunately a lot of the west has fallen into is is unhealthy and when we look at scripture in, and in the new testament what mm-hmm. we start seeing is we see a a community that's the body of christ that's that's mutually submissive and uh and and we together are, are the tangible hands and feet of Jesus in, in right. the world here. And, and there's so many benefits to it. So, there, yeah, it's basically if, if you're going to church on Sunday and you're so concerned about like what color the carpet is, hmm. 
that you miss out on what Jesus is doing, yeah, then you miss the big you picture. You miss the whole point. Um, a great question came up uh, from Tina in the comments. She's wanting to know uh, a little bit background on parachurches versus churches, which I think is a great, great discussion to, to okay. kind of throw in there at the beginning. Um, so there's two types of organizations that you'll see a lot in the Christian realm. Um, there's parachurch ministries and then there's church ministries. So, so your church is is like a, I was going to say Sunday morning, but we're Sunday night. Um, it's, it's an organization of, of believers that are committed to, um, to each other that, that function in the way a church functions. Um, and so New Testament, we see some of the things that churches do, like they get together to have the sacraments together. They have uh, mutually, um, mutual accountability with each other. They're there for uh, discipleship of believers. They're there for... Um, you know, salvation, baptisms. That's um, parachurches? No, no, this is church. Oh, okay. like This is church realm. So okay. so churches are, are performing the functions of what we would consider a church. Right. So they have their own membership. There's usually a pastor or mm-hmm. a team of pastors, elders, deacons, sometimes they call them different things, that lead the church. And together as a church, our ministry is going to be um, fulfilling the Great Commission, which is making disciples who make disciples. You know, Jesus said before the, in, before the ascension, go into all of the world and, and preach the gospel, um, teaching people to ob- uh, observe the things I've taught you and baptizing them in my name. So organizations that get together for that purpose are churches. churches. Um, and then parachurch organizations are, are organizations that are Christian, mm-hmm. but they don't necessarily, that's not their main focus. So um, some, you know, like, in our community, Love Inc. is a parachurch organization, uh, meaning that Love Inc. doesn't meet to be a church. Love Inc. meets to um, mobilize the churches and help them. Oh, okay. So they come alongside of a church and, and help them do it. Like a radio stations can be a parachurch ministry. Sure. Um, you know, Salvation Army is a parachurch ministry. So I didn't know that. Yeah, so they're like sometimes summer camps are with, with kids are a parachurch ministry. So they're Christian ministries. Mm-hmm. They're there advancing the gospel, but they're not trying to be a church they come come alongside a lot of times many churches and help sure. all of the churches in in their ministry So, like hills alive is it, like a parachurch event yes it's a parachurch event exactly so a parachurch organizations come together and and help fund it and put it on it's not necessarily a church because you can't go to hills live every sunday right you can't go um you know that so and you can't say hills alive was put on by such and such church. Yeah, and so and some churches are part of denominations, meaning they're part of a bigger family. Yeah. Um, and then some churches are are independent, where they're just themselves. Okay. Um, and there's there's a whole lot of different realms in there. So if I said something that totally confused you, you can ask some more questions in the comments. But I'm I'm gonna talk specifically about churches and the local church. So you can be a member of a parachurch organization, and that's that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But Parachurches aren't meant to replace the local church. They're to come alongside of the church um, and, and minister with it. So you'll a lot of times see parachurch organizations made up of members of a lot of churches. So you might have the Baptist in town joining mm-hmm. us with the E Free and the um, sure. uh, whatever denomination, whatever theological background of, of evangelical churches you want to throw in there. So um, that's. Yeah, and, and Michelle's right. They they usually have a, a lot more specific focus of work. So Love, Inc. tries to work with poverty alleviation. Um, and they do that through the gospel, but their their goal isn't to be a church. And if you ask them, they would agree with that, um, that they don't, they're don't they not striving to be a church right. or replace a church. All right, so, um, so why should you be part of a local church? Um, what, are, what are the benefits? What are some, some of the things that are, are good with being part of a local church? And so there's uh, six points in this blog. I was going to go through and talk about some of them. I'm adding a little bit. going to hi- highlight some of the things in there. But uh, these, are, these are some of the things that I think are helpful with that. Um, so the first one is, should we do a drum roll? Maybe I already went to the blog and already saw them. All right. First one is that in joining a local church, you make visible your commitment to Christ and his people. So we, we, like I said, we live in a consumeristic driven commu- culture, right? Yeah. And, and so, um, so in order to become like a part of a church, wouldn't somebody just have to show up every Sunday? Wouldn't just be, just show up. So that's a great question because I'm there on Sundays. 
Right. Does that make me a member of the church? Right. Any guesses? <laughs> some churches have different different views on that. So right. Some churches have differing views. Um, I, I believe that it's great for people to come up and and show up at church, but being a member is like the next step. So it's it's like I remember the time I first started flirting with Michelle, right before we were dated. Um, I still I still flirt with Michelle now, um, good. which is good. Yeah. So be, but before we were married, we you know I kind of liked her and I kind of threw glances her way every now and then, hoping she'd throw me a glance back, right? Um, we did the whole flirting thing. And so that's like one level of our relationship. Right. Then we, you know, I asked her out. We started going out on dates and probably, together. And you probably made your judgments off her based off of... How she responded. Kind of shallow, like, like just like, like face value. Mm-hmm judgments mm-hmm. that you were able to make yeah what well, is she pretty does she yeah. yep. does she yeah you know like the the initial things does she pique my interest all that right. so funny funny story even with that whole thing and i think this would play into the whole like picking a church conversation michelle had a friend named aaron and when i the first night i met michelle i actually like i'd flirted with michelle and then like the next week i started flirting with her friend because i wasn't sure which one i was more interested in and so michelle obviously won um, and so I don't know if I should be saying that on live TV that like, or live, whatever we're in that might, uh, surprise some people, but, but yeah, there was, it, it wasn't a very committed relationship at all at that point. Right. Like right. I'm just, Hey, you're cute. Yeah. Want to flirt with me type of thing. But then, you know, as we progress, you know, we went to dinners, we started going to movies. Um, and you know, then we get engaged, right. Which is like the next level. Well, yeah. Yeah. You- started to form a relationship yeah relationships there got to know each other is there something there can can we even hold a conversation and be interest you know i might find out she's a vegan and then like you know that might not work and so um okay no more no more vegans oh hey text says her comments are still being deleted call me again john um i don't know i'm not sure why the comments aren't showing up tech i she's the only one saying that so if you if you like Keep throwing in, and I'll see if you're if I see your comments coming through here. Keep keep on top of that tech because I definitely want to address your questions and comments because um, I know you got some good stuff to throw in there. So, but yeah, so the, the the relationship progresses eventually up to we get in front of a bunch of people, and I publicly commit to everybody. Michelle is is the one I'm gonna do life with, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, I think going to churches, there's nothing wrong with it, like as far as just attending a church, but the natural progression of relationships goes from simple and shallow to deep and committed. Right. And, and I'm, I'm going to argue that there's so much more that you get out of it. Absolutely. When you're deep and committed. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the joy that comes out of our, our marriage now never was foreseeable at the point of just, Hey, want to go to McDonald's? Um, so yes. So that's, I, I think there's a natural healthy progression. Um, Tina, I'll get to the baptized question here in a little bit. Um, I don't want you to think I've, I've ignored it. And I don't know if there's any other questions that I've, let me scroll through these here real quick. Um, no, I haven't missed anything. Abby's on top of it. What do you know? Um, so yeah, so, so when you join a church, you're making a visible commitment to Christ and his people. So this is like the wedding day, so to speak. Like I'm going to get up in front of people and say, renewal is my church. I agree with where they're at. I'm going to give myself to them. They're going to give of themselves to me. And we're going to do a relationship as we go through with the church. Now, whatever church you're part of, um, I think it's important to be part of a local church yeah. because it provides benefits and, and the relationship is is well on a more official level. Well, and, you know, all things being said, like it feels good to be completely fulfilled and in uh, in being involved in God's family mm-hmm. and being a part of what He's doing. Yeah, it feels good. It's because we're made to do that. Yeah, we're made. Yeah, we're fulfilling our God created, mm-hmm. which is to be in relationship with God and to be part of His body serving as priest kings to a creation that needs to um, needs to experience the the transformative power of Jesus Christ and so that's that's one thing now um, a, a comment I hear a lot 
from people is, well, I'm just part of the lo- the global church. Like I, I in, in Nebraska, I knew a rancher guy who told me, he's like, well, I, I get just as much out of, out of uh, jumping on my horse and riding up into the hills and I'll have time with Jesus up there. I don't need to go to church because my church is just in the hills on my horse with Jesus, right? I'm right. part of the, the global church. I'm part of, um, which sounds really spiritual. Sounds like you've really thought this out. Well, and in a way, he's not wrong. He's not wrong in a way. In a way. In a way. But what's he what's he missing? What's the shallowness of that? What right. would you say? Well, he's he's missing the opportunity to uh, be in a in a in a tight knit group of people that are building each other up and growing in their faith in Christ. I yeah. Mean, like, do, yeah, do you do communion with your horse? Like, right. <laughs> do, you, do you, yeah, do you have the Lord's Supper? Did you baptize your horse? Like, and like back to like what we were talking about with uh, like judging a church by the color of its carpet or something. If you're if you're going to a church and you're and you're and you're there for the service and you're and you're just there judging the service on face value, mm-hmm. then. That's that's just the that's just the surface. That's just like the tip of the iceberg yeah. of a church. Yeah. And so I would throw out that using that cop out that like I'm just part of the global church. I don't need to be part of a like a local church. That sounds great in theory and it's it is true, theologically true. We're part of the global church. Mm-hmm. But but being part of a local church is a practical way to put like action to your words. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, I think it's almost a, the easy way out. And and a fun fact in the New Testament, you never see the like just me and Jesus idea. Like it's just me and Jesus. No, God created us to be communal creatures mm-hmm. that are in relationship with each other. Um, and and I I bet right now, everybody that's cooped up in their house due to COVID, right, would connect with this a little bit more. Like relationships are important. Well, even even like right now in this room with. I'm in here, John's in here, Abby's in here, and Jesus resides within each of us Mm -hmm. separately. Jesus is more here now than he would be if I were alone in my car. Yeah, yeah, like the, the, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's, that's true individually, but it's especially true, yeah, collectively. In a group. That, that God inhabits the praise of his people. He, his spirit indwells in the church. And when we're gathered together, like that's where, that's where we experience practically God's presence and we can, we can enjoy God in a, in a way together that we couldn't before. And so I think, I think, yeah, that when you make a membership commitment to a church, mm-hmm. you're publicly saying, this is how I'm practically fulfilling the commission of God of, yes, I'm supposed to, I'm part of the global church, but when God calls us to go and make disciples, I'm finding a discipleship oriented church and we're going to do that together. Um, and that's, that's some of the, the beauty of it. And yeah, like Emily says in their fellowship, fellowship is, is highly, um, important and that can't happen when you're by yourself. Um, and so it, it, yeah, it makes a, makes a powerful statement, which brings me to the second one. Um, that when you make a commitment to your local church, you're making a powerful statement in a low commitment culture, right? Like mm. we, our culture is very low commitment. Do you see that in, in anywhere? Um, low commitment, low expectations, low. Yep. Uh, is there any particular way you've, you've noticed that going on? Uh, I don't know if it's my age group or, or what, but it seems like, like people in my gen, I'm a millennial. <laughs> So a lot of people in my generation are kind of flaky. Like, like you know, they say we'll meet here and, and do this, and maybe they'll show up, maybe they won't. You know, it's you never you never know until yeah. they until they follow and through. You get with to it. the point where you just kind of accept it. And, yeah. All right. Um, and I, in that article, he talks about, and I think it's very true, that we live in a culture where like you're bowling league team has a higher commitment and expectation level of you 
than like most of our relationships and and especially the church like yeah even like employment yeah in america like being employed somewhere is kind of like a low end commitment for, you, you might show up to work you might not <laughs> might show up a couple hours late yeah i mean I, I worked at one place and i won't say the name but i worked at one place and there was an employee there he got he got so drunk one time that he missed work for two weeks straight, no call, no show. <laughs> they they took him back when he came in. Like, and this wasn't like this is the only time. Like he did it repeatedly. Like, we live in a very low commitment culture now. That uh, oh yeah, and that probably reflects on the divorce rate. Yeah, like, yeah. What's like, you know, there there used to be the old school it, thing. Like, and that probably goes back to the whole entitlement. Thing, yeah, it is. Right? It is. Like it's not living up to my expectations because I'm just so great. Yeah. I'm just gonna leave it there. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that's why I mean when you think about it, that's why when all your service contracts require a two-year commitment and a penalty if you back out, right? It's because they know you're gonna back out, right? Um, or you know, damage deposit on rents and all that. Yep. They, they don't gym expect a lot out of you. Gym memberships. Yeah. yeah. And so it's in our culture, we're just okay with that, but. When we commit to a local church, it's making a huge statement saying that this is worth my time, this is my effort, and I'm, I'm going to stand out um, that Christ and his people are important, and so I'm going to publicly proclaim um, that. And, it, and it, it makes a huge statement that I'm committed to this group, they're committed to me, and together we're going to self-sacrificially serve each other. Um, because that's where Christ is is glorified the most um, right. through His people, so that's a uh, I think definitely a, a benefit to being part of a local church. If you guys have any any uh, questions, throw into in the thing. Oh, Jesse, Jesse threw in here that church shows us how to find our spiritual gifts. It, yep, mm-hmm. sometimes we need others to see that for us, right? Absolutely, uh, it's it's a way that we can like like I can see that somebody has an administrative gift. You know, where somebody has the gift of, of serving, somebody has the gift of, of giving, somebody has the gift of teaching, somebody has the gift of, of um, I don't know, there's, there's a bunch of them, pick them. But like, th- that's a way to practically serve each other um, with the gift that God has given you through the power of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, that's definitely a, a great point there, Jesse. Um, and Michelle says accountability to what we say. That's, that's very true and to sharpen each other in our faith. Um, yeah, that that part of the commitment is that we can be accountable to each other, and I think I think that's partially why people are so afraid of committing to a church, is because I don't like the accountability. You gotta be vulnerable. You gotta be vulnerable, and then what happens when I'm doing something that maybe isn't pleasing to God? Right. And then all of a sudden, Jason comes up to me. He's like, "Dude, you you're you're living in a way that's contrary to what you're claiming. Mm-hmm. You sure you want to be doing that?" And he's lovingly calling me back to Jesus. I'm like, well, I'm not committed to this church. I'm going to go down to the one across the street, just like we talked about with restaurants. Right. Food was bad. I'm going to go over here. Right. And then I'll leave it a negative review on the way out. <laughs> it, uh, it gives us permission to speak into each other's lives um, in a way that if you're not a member, you're missing out on, really, um, to encourage each other onto Jesus. So, uh, which brings to the next, the third point. Um, which is that we can be overly independent in our culture. Um, we tend to be very independent in the Western yeah. world, and that's not always a good thing. Yep. You ever hear the phrase, pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Is that possible? Well, you know, a lot of people seem to think it is, right? Like, I grew up in kind of a, a farm ranch community. I, my dad was a carpenter, but I, I grew up in that kind of work hard work ethic which is good but there was kind of this self-sufficient don't ask for help right um if you're in, if you're lost yeah just sun rises in the east and sets <laughs> in the west that's right be fine. that's right like there's so many great country songs about it right like fix your lipstick put on a smile and don't show anybody that you're hurting on the inside right like right. that's that's kind of um the culture that that's that's got in here we want to be we want to be the Lone Ranger. We want to do life on our own. And I don't want people to know that I'm hurting. I don't want people to, uh, I don't want people to into that accountability, that, that level of vulnerability. Um, and that's, 
that's not a good thing. It's actually very unhealthy. Um, I know you've been doing some some looking into some stuff on that, like unhealthiness and of of some of those attitudes. And I don't know if there's anything you want to throw in on on what's unhealthy about the go it alone attitude versus doing it with doing life with people or. Uh, well. I don't know. I was just kind of following the train of thought, and I was thinking about how, um, yeah, I don't know. I was just just following along. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I'll I'll say so, I'll I'll pipe in when I think it's okay. smart. <laughs> um, Sarah says the crazy thing is most people love to help, but beat themselves up when they ask for help. That's very true. Um, like. I want to come in and save the day for everybody else, right. but I don't want anybody to save the day for me. Right. Like today, I, I didn't let Michelle help me get dressed because I wanted to prove that I could do it myself. And in reality, I'm not sure that that was healthy because my back is hurt. Like it's been surgically well, altered. Right. And that that's the thing I think that a lot of people um, face is the fear of rejection. Mm. Because what if I am vulnerable mm. in a setting and I show people exactly who I am and they reject me? That's right. There's a, that's a pretty scary thought to me. Like, I just, I was just like opened up and, you know, and it's then like, now what do we do? Now what do we do? Yeah. So, so, but when you do become vulnerable and you do open up, in a church setting with like other people that are also on the same, like the same path, you know, trying to better ourselves and let Christ work in us. When you do expose yourself and you're vulnerable and you find out that you are loved, mm -hmm. there's, it's such a good feeling. It's just like, I'm home. These are my brothers and sisters and we're in this together and it's yeah good. and i think that yeah you're touching on some really interesting ideas that somehow in western church culture and i'm not exactly sure how it came about but we've got to the place where it's not okay to be not okay right like if you go to church you have to put on your right. your sunday my, face these are this is my family we're all dressed perfectly my my children are all ma are wearing matching clothes. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with us. They never do anything wrong. They're perfectly well behaved. Yeah, and, like and as long as everybody sees that in the hour that you're at church, then you got you've it together. Done what you're then you you've accomplished the goal. You can go home and and celebrate by, you know, <laughs> fighting or whatever. <laughs> like like we could I remember like we, There'd be times when we're like arguing and fighting and kicking and screaming yeah. on the way to church. And the second you get in church, make everything perfect. Your hair's not even brushed. God forbid we're a mess, right? Yeah. Like we don't, we, and it's because that there's a certain level of toxicity that has grown up in some churches. Perfectionism. That, yeah, that like perfectionism is, is an idol that we it's have. An and, and if I find out that you're not okay... We take it to our small group uh, prayer meetings, which is just turns into be gossip sessions. Ultimately, like, did you hear about right. Jason? He's got He's this going perfect. on. He's not perfect. I heard that he wasn't perfect. And and the reality is, we're all broken. Right. We're all in need of Jesus. And if I told you guys about all the junk I'm struggling with, you might be surprised. And and somehow, as the church, God is calling us to be vulnerable with each other, mm -hmm. to to say, you know what, I'm struggling here in this issue. Can you come alongside of me and hold me accountable? Because what I'm doing, I don't want to be doing, and I need help getting over it. But we're afraid to say that because if I let anybody know that I'm struggling with this. Right. Then you're not perfect. Then I'm not perfect, and people are going to be you upset. Can't, you can't hold on to that perfect image of yourself that that you're clinging on to. But, but in reality, the, the strength and power comes from... Um, celebrating our weakness because that's where Jesus shines the brightest yeah is through our weaknesses that, that I am a broken mess but I'm a broken mess that God loves that right. God's transitioning me out of 
that we're in the process of becoming more like Christ. Some of us are different places on that journey, but but ultimately we all need Jesus. And if so, if you're if you're so if you're so perfect that you can't be vulnerable, then you might need to look at is that an idol in your life? Um, is that something that you're worshiping? So so being a member of a church teaches us that we can be interdependent, that I can be dependent on Jason, Jason can be dependent on me. We're all dependent on each other, and together. We're part of bigger than something bigger than ourselves, and we're we're not just us and God. It's like me and my, you know, family of 50, 100, 200, whatever church size you're together. It's like an organism. Yeah, yeah. Like it's my. Like, it's like I'm the stomach, and you know, you're the clavicle. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm a clavicle. <laughs> I've, a clavicle. I've always thought about like you know Jesus says we're we're part of the body of Christ. I've always wondered like. You know, if we're all part of the body, who's the rear end, right? Like, right. <laughs> but but yeah, my heart's an amazing organ, but it does nothing on its own, unless my brain tells right. it to pump. Exactly. And unless you know the organs have well, something in with essence, the blood, we literally need each other. Yeah, we we can't do this on our own. Um, so then, not being alone brings us to the next point, number four, which is that church membership holds us accountable. It keeps us accountable and I think I think this is one of the deterrents to church membership that people naturally fight is they don't want to be accountable um, so Michelle says how many times have we missed out on help from uh, someone who has been there yeah we've there, when you think that you've got it all on your own you're you're missing the blessing of, of developing that relationship and you're actually stealing the opportunity from someone else to g- have them give the joy of helping you um, and being part of it so you're actually you're actually like doubly hurting. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting them, um, and that's like my heart saying, "No, don't. I don't need. Uh, I don't need my uh, liver. I can do all this on my own and kicks the liver out of the body, right?" Um, Bad idea. Which, yeah, is is unhealthy. So, church membership keeping us accountable. Um, I don't. I think people don't like accountability, right? Like, there, there's like this false idea that only God can judge me. Only you know. Oh, yeah, and how dare you suggest that I'm not perfect? Mm-hmm. And I think that the the brokenness and the attitude of 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 the church is forcing people to put on a show of their their perfection. Mm-hmm. Um, has broken has an outfall where it's broken the the accountable part because if we are okay that together we need Jesus, then it's okay to be held accountable. Um, and right. And you give each other permission in church membership to to hold each other accountable, um, and so like if we can all be humble and say, "I'm not perfect," Jesus is, Jesus is perfect, I'm not. That's right. And the only the only reason I'm as good as you know I'll ever be is because of Jesus. That's right. And we all recognize that. I, I like to I like to joke at times, but I think there's some truth to it that you know when Paul wrote he was the chief of sinners, that's because he hadn't met me yet. Um, right. I, I think that's very true. That like I I'm broken, and it's it's okay to admit that I need Jesus, and it's okay for you to admit you need Jesus, and and together um, we can hold each other accountable in that. And so being part of church membership is m- me telling Jason, you know what I struggle with this issue, like I'm a glutton. Jason, I struggle with being a glutton. Can you, when you see me being a glutton, I give you permission to, to lovingly say, hey, remember how you asked about that? Like, I'm going to hold you accountable because I know that's not who you want to be. Right. And so... Um, in a loving way. In a loving way. Not like, you're going to eat another one of those? Like, that's not loving. <laughs> but like, hey, do you remember when you said Your, that... Your uh, clothes are getting a little tight there, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's a loving way and a very unloving way to do it. But but it's it's... It's the idea of together we can you can help me become who God's creating me to be because you can you can speak into my life because I've given you permission from being a church member and it, and it helps me get there um, the better. So I'll help you. Will you help me? Yeah. It's a mutual covenant. Will yeah. you guys help us? And and that's just one aspect of it. I mean, um, we we grow in our like strength and commitment to our like our walk with God and mm-hmm. and you well, you know it all that other stuff just kind of falls to the wayside when yep. you're when you're just 
focusing on God. That's right. So I'm going to move along for the sake of time. The Number five is that when you join the church, you actually help your pastor and the church leaders be more faithful shepherds. Um, I'm accountable to God for what I do in renewal. Um, those who are taking leadership in renewal, are, we're going to have to give an account to God someday of, of how did we shepherd the people that are part of this church? How did we love the people that are part of this church? And and when you become a member, it, it helps us in the sense of like, I can acknowledge that you're going through a tough time if you're a member and I, I can like see that, you know, hey, somebody hasn't been at church for a while. I wonder what's going on. And I can, I can check into that and see where you're at. But like, if you don't ever take that, it's hard to see on a relationship level um, what's going on. It's like when Michelle and I are flirting, if I have to just flirt with her one day, and then she disappears out of the radar, like, well, okay, I don't really think about it that much. Well, she's just gone, and I move on to the next person. Right. But after our wedding day, if all of a sudden Michelle's gone for some time, like, what's going on? And it, it, it gives us more ability to, to be healthy leaders in, in that relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember growing up in my church, um, I was a kid, and I just had an innocent question. I actually remember, like, a really profound statement that an adult told me and I said um, you know I was just curious it's like who owns this church <laughs> like the building yeah. You know? yeah who owns this church and then they very wisely they said we all do that's right this is our church it's our church it's not the pastor's church right he's just a organ in a group of organs like we we're talking about the heart the liver the, the lungs like right it's just one function and he can't do it all we all need each other. So a good church is what you make it. Yeah, it's if you As if you're if you're part of a toxic church, it might be that <laughs> you're part of the problem. Like, right. be there to help fix What's it. What's that other saying? Like, um, if if I ever find a perfect church, yeah, um, if I leave it, <laughs> hey, don't go to it because you'll ruin it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you'll do that. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's there. So. Um, that's uh, number five. The number six one is that joining the church gives you an opportunity to uh, make promises. It gives you an opportunity to serve. There's there's all kinds of places to serve in a local church. I know in ours, I'm not going to let somebody in some roles serve if they're not a member because in the process of becoming a member, it gives a, an opportunity to discuss where people are at and right. see their, their readiness level for serving. Um, but it, it opens opportunities in a church and, and it allows you um, to, to publicly proclaim you're on... You're on mission and vision with the church. It, you can help implement that. You can, you know, if you're talking about rowing the boat, you're going to help row the boat in the right direction, mm-hmm. not try and paddle it the other way. Um, and and becoming a member of a church, you get to find out a little bit where we're at and what direction the boat's going. And we say, you know what, there's a there's a spot for you to row, and it's right here, and we need you. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is where we're going, so there's clarity on on where we're at, and it gives you an opportunity. And maybe there's to a go. role that we haven't even thought of. That you see. That your gift is like 100% perfect for, and and it's it's created. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, all right. Uh, I think, yeah, that blog post is in there uh, three or four different times. I think it got posted. Um, and so if you want to read the, the whole thing, you can um, go there. Uh, it's with the Gospel Coalition, so it's at the beginning and the end of the thing. Um, but yeah, the big takeaway I want to take to, uh, away from tonight is that membership is vitally important in your discipleship journey. Um, so look for a Jesus-following, Bible-teaching, mission-driven church, and then jump in the boat and help row it that direction. Um, that's what it is. Now back to the question of, of baptism that was asked earlier. So we're part of a church uh, family that believes in believers' baptism. So so part of joining the church with, with renewal is that uh, you publicly co- confess your faith in Jesus Christ. You are baptized publicly as, as not that baptism saves you, but that baptism is a public declaration of, of that your citizenship has changed, that we are on, um, we're changing our citizenship to, from this world to the citizenship of, of a follower of Jesus Christ. And so baptism is important, um, and we do ask that uh, members of Renewal are, are, are baptized as an adult because that is in our uh, doctrinal statement. Um, and we'd love to baptize people and have the baptism discussion. So if you've never been baptized, I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, 
But if you would like to become an official member of Renewal um, and help us reach people with the gospel of Jesus, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I think Abby's going to throw my phone number in the uh, comments. So this is my personal cell phone. You can call or text it. Um, and uh, yeah, just don't give it out to all the people wanting me to uh, update my auto warranty. I don't know if I'm the only one that gets those calls, but uh, yeah, I think they already got my number. So if you want to talk to me a little bit more about uh, membership, I would love to do that because we're we're a family that wants to uh, be mutually committed, mutually submissive to each other as we follow Jesus Christ. So um, did that answer your question on baptism, Tina? If not, you can throw it in there again, and I can stay a little bit later after the discussion and, and have that conversation, or you can call me. Um, but baptism is, we do believe in that. Um, baptism is a sign of following, that you're a follower of Jesus. So, all right. Uh, we are looking forward to re meeting again. Um, after we pray, I'll, I'll give out an announcement on that. Um, what all prayer requests did we have, Abby? Just one. Just one. Sarah, prayer for her brother in finding a place to live. Oh, yes. So, um, yeah, he's... He's my brother. He's your brother, too. Um, he's he's struggling with a place to live. I know right now with the COVID, mm -hmm. the economy's down, things are tough. Um, so, yeah. And again, part of being part of a church is that we can help serve each other in difficult yeah. times. So, awesome. Well, Jason, do you want to pray for this and yeah. close us off in prayer? Sure. And then I'll give the, the announcement um, at the end here. So, All right. Dear Jesus, I, I thank you so much that you've given us this opportunity to be part of something so much bigger than ourselves mm. and that um, we can find purpose and fulfillment in being a part of a church body and becoming a member of a church and that there is there's just um, endless opportunity in becoming a church uh, being becoming a part of a church to serve you and to and to do um, what we we're created to do and Lord I uh, specifically pray for uh, my brother Jim and and um, and obviously Sarah's brother. Um, he's he lost his job like like a month ago when this whole uh, virus stuff started. He was working at a restaurant and it closed down and and Lord, he's uh, he just needs the the grace of of someone who's cares and, and loves enough to offer him a place to live for a little bit. So Lord, I pray that that you um, work in the hearts of those people that are um, have the capability of helping him. And Lord, um, I pray that he finds a place soon. And Lord, I thank you for everyone that's here tonight. Um, in the live stream with us, with the uh, with the uh, this different way we're doing things until we can meet again, Lord, I thank you for um, the earnestness and their desire to um, to seek you first and foremost, and and um, just the natural outflowing of that. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So yeah, thanks for joining us. I did uh, see tech asked about uh, membership with renewal yeah i i would if you are not part of a church um, and you would want to talk to membership about re with renewal specifically um, i would love to have that conversation um, we do have uh, a membership covenant we ask people to uh, go through and sign with us and i'd love to have that conversation um, is with it anybody like a nine to. week class no it's not a nine week class it's 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 simple and i'll just answer any questions you guys have to the best of my ability and we will um, do that so yeah. Um, so the the announcement is that uh, I the city council is having a meeting tomorrow night to have a vote on when we can start opening things back up in Rapid City and how how soon we can start gathering again together, which does impact us. Um, I, I think that they're probably going to roll things out slowly, like we'll start to be able to have gatherings of ten people um, or six feet apart, which we have the capabilities of at Renewal. Right. Um, and then, you know, you can have 10 people or 50 people and 200, kind of like right. reverse of what we did. And a lot of that we did the very last week that we got together. Yeah. 
with sanitizing things. Yeah, so so as the city's uh, gonna allow it, there's a possibility, I don't know if it's gonna be next week, um, but in the very near future, I foresee that we're gonna be able to hopefully be uh, able to meet in person. And so um, make sure you stay tuned to that. And once we have the permission to do that, we'll start uh, meeting. Now, if you would feel more comfortable meeting online with us, we're still gonna live stream the full service. So you can still do that. Um, but there is a possibility that we can start having some in-person meetings um, in the near future. So, yeah, That's I'm exciting. excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, love to be back with you guys all in person. So, thanks for joining. You guys are all awesome. I'm praying for you. If you need to want to have a private uh, discussion with me, feel free to do that anytime. We're going to get some Zoom meetings going up here And once Wednesdays we do and start going back to meeting in person, we're, you're going to keep doing coffee with the past. Yeah, we'll do like this sometime during the week as like a midweek thing. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have some discussions from my office mm. and uh, maybe do that a little bit as a secondary thing. So stay tuned. So stay that. tuned, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you all in person again. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next week.